23rd of February, 9.23 a.m. The Old Bailey Defendant's Ante Chamber. This is it then, Mr. Narahudu. Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsume. To everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Mrs. Sato. Suffering, Suzuki, selfishly sidelined. Oh. Good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning! Good morning, Lucas and Mr. Noda Esquire! Listen to you two chatting away happily as if the main player of today's trial is dear. Why would you do that? Why? Oh dear, we didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps that because you had your eyes shut so tightly, you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting! What's the matter, Mr. Natsumi? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because I've attained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover one's own death. Or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I missed the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow. You'll have to forgive me. <sighs> And you mustn't talk of your path leading you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example! Oh, yeah, there it is. Inner calm. You you barely came to see me at all yesterday. I assure you that men be in return to our beautiful long-lost homeland. We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yeah, well, anyway. I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. But I've actually reached an important decision myself. Oh, what sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial. Alright. It would seem Mr. Sholmes isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think, that he's overslept again. The great detective, my arch nemesis. Long may he stay away, if you ask me. Very and you leave up serious. The trial is about to begin. May I go to the courtroom immediately? Today, once again, we face the Reaper, and when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Susaki sens curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. <clears throat> in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good. And now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury, chosen by law to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mark my words. I feel obliged to say, I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat is sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could adjust my hat for me. And please, be as ruthless as you like. Thieves deserve to die, if you ask me. Especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for the man at all. Look, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. Oh, my lord, show us all the light here. 
and lead his flock to a righteous verdict again today. Now, Lord Van Zeex, what can you tell us? The prosecution's report, please, for the court. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's tea. So he does have the result. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the black guard in the dock. Pray allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine hue. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bath soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed a frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Natsumi brought with him that night. Well, the brains of the old analyzer is in the air. You're right. It was tea. And there wasn't a trace of shaking in or any other toxic substance in it. Uh, no poison at all. In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's in the clear. What a revelation! Alright, time to go home. Thanks for coming in, everybody. Let's go home. As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Sasaki Natsumi, is blameless. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. Typical Nipponese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But, what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Times and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? My word, the water in the ocean is extremely salty, Kazu. <laughs> exactly. Unfit for drinking. Just as the victim Steve was on the night in question, as the court has already heard. Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mr. William Shamspear, whom the prosecution now calls to the stand. What are you playing at, Van Zeex? Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's request. Mr. Shamspear? Yeah, it sounds like we're gonna have to. We're gonna have another conversation. Yeah, it sounds like we're gonna have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Bailiff, show Mr. Shamsmith to the stand. Mr. William Shamsmith, the victim of this despicable crime. Oh, Heron, oh, hell. Do you command me to remember? Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a belly full of the foul fluid given in mine innocence. Oh. Whatever. Yes, but as was revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we had perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. Oh, one may smile and smile and be a villain. Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a room full of the sweet full fuel given. That's right, fellow jurors, don't forget, this man is a rotten thief. I've forgotten, kept all that about the ice cones a tidy secret, didn't you? You should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say, arrest him at once, and let him feel the sting in my tail. Oh, indeed. By dint of vile and cowardly means, have I plotted to further mine own need, I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins, of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths. And for a coward such as I, death be well deserved. But... 
would it that a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of Father East, then Verona did contrive to poison me! Objection! But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. But the defense for the assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamspear? Verily, my liege, I would most gladly speak. Very well. Let the witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why is it that poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea. Hmm, what's he up to? <clears throat> I don't like this. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. Twas in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Whilst feigning distraction in our debate, ne'er did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. When he departed by and by, I did use that tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, tis no surprise that poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the molds of soap. What? The poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. The normal way for poison to be administered, in my experience. Quite. Otherwise, it would be disastrous if the poison were to mix up the cups, for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nipponese took the bottle back to his own room. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. Ooh, I knew that. By now, it should be perfectly clear. A bowl or two of cheap soap is wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused hands. Ooh. Sirs, madams, tis true that I, Shamspear, be a common thief of gas. But, but, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Wherefore would I lie? Verily, I have no cause. I have naught to lose. Well, I do declare... Thank you for your testimony, witness. Cancel. Proceed with the cross-examination. Uh, yes, my lord. Alright. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. Do we have new evidence? No. Alright. I understand that you are already acquainted with Mr. Natsume, is that correct? I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. Do I know thee, or know thee not? Methinks tis all I can know that thy destiny mingles with mine. You lost me at the first thee. Zound, sir, thou must learn the English tongue afore thou turns thy head to lawyering. I did, but I must have missed the archaic Elizabethan lecture. Verily and in truth, twas a fine flavored brew. Though a drop of poison did barb its sweetness, as the thorn doth barb the sweet rose. That, dear friends, be the simple truth. Listen to Mr. Shamspear. He seems in even better form than he was yesterday. Either that, or I'm in worse form. That fated evening, after I did dine at Grub's Grabbery, a local alehouse of good report, naught did pass my lips but the tainted black tea. But behold, the poison was not in the tea at first. 
twas in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. How do you know that? Are you saying that you saw the moment when the poison was added to your tea? To have witnessed the act and then drank the tea, thou dost describe the actions of a fool. Well, quite so, quite so. But no one likes going thirsty, do they? Sooner would I die quenched than parched, would I have the choice. Actually, on the ninth question, the water main was frozen, I believe, wasn't it? Were it not for the tea, in sooth I would sooner have died frozen than quenched or parched. Right, no ice coins means no heating. The witness had more than one brush with death on the dot in question, it would seem. Hmm. Remind the court, Mr. Shamspear, as to whether the accused drank any of the tea with which he brought with him. With the greatest of pleasure, my liege. Whilst feigning distraction in our debate, Nia did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. But the teacup Mr. Natsumi drank from was found completely empty at the scene. And let's not forget the defender's maxim drink tea while it's hot. I did go from the poisoned cup that night, and in mine agony did I writhe uncontrolled. In fits of pain I did knock the fellow's cup and its contents spilt as blood from a gaping wound, methinks. Though certainly it was after I had made the coins of ice from his tea. An upset cup was found on the table that the victim was slumped over. There's no contradiction here. It is true, there was no tea left in either cup that we found at the scene. But still, something about this statement is troubling me. Yeah, of course, I know what it is. It's Mr. Natsumi's wise drink tea while it's hot maxim, isn't it? No, I'm not sure that's it. <laughs> Thank you, witness. Now, reiterate for the court what it is that occupied you after your guests had left and before you drank your tea. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Yeah, so that you could cheat the gas company, in fact. Isn't that right? To cheat or to die. Tis life's only choice. Yeah. Faith to cheat be the wise choice, and mine occupation be not an ugly one. Pray thee, dost thou not see beauty in the simplicity of the ruse? No, I don't, and be very sure, sir. Once this trial is over, Altamont Gas will take you to task over this legal task. I shall not run, I shall not hide. Sooth to say, I have nowhere to run, nor to hide. But my lady, what wouldst thou with this pitiful player? Oh, I'll tell you what I'd like to do with you, starting with the shoddy shirt on your back. But... Tis time for a sham spear dance! What a harsh world we live in. The saving of the gas was addressed in yesterday's proceedings. The prosecution calls on the defense not to muddy the waters with irrelevancy. Consider that a warning, Gazel. Yes, my lord. Why am I the one in trouble here? Mr. Shamspear, after the accused returned to his own lodgings, you used his tea to make your coins. Is that correct? To cheat or to die. I did make my choice many moons ago. Thus, tis no surprise that poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the molds of soap. If having first made your special coins, it was after two in the morning when you first collapsed, when you collapsed, that would mean you c you can't have drunk any tea yourself until around that time. 
Once ensnared by literally debate, naught else be found in the furrows of the mind. The debate about Romeo and Juliet, you mean? And who was the stronger of the two? Rightly did I pay no heed to the tea as I wrestled with the abominable, abominable fellow. I don't remember debates like that when I was studying. Are you suggesting that neither of you actually drank the tea while it, whilst it was hot that evening? My lord, wouldst thou be privy to some Shakespearean wisdom? Husband, wife, and tea ought I tap it be. Ah uh, yes, so very true. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to tea. I think you might have interpreted interpreted that wrongly. Fuck. Hmm. So it's been proven that there was no poison in, in Sosaki san's tea. That should be usually in our favor. But the atmosphere in this courtroom today. It feels as though everybody is against us, Mr. Narahodo. It must be the Reaper's poison. I am afraid that if we don't find a significant flaw in this testimony somewhere, the jury will pounce and find Mr. Natsume guilty. It really feels like we've jumped into the fire here. Alright, so... Could it really be that easy? The fact that the cup has the marking on it, proving that Sham Spear drank his after a while, but Natsumi drank it immediately. Let's see what happens. Objection. You claim that Mr. Natsumi didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question. But that's impossible. How, 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 chop logic? What is this, ye dark, ye clad fa fiend? The two teacups from the scene, one used by the victim and the other by the defendant, have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? The difference. Look at the inside of the cups, just here. There's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsumi's cup has no such ring. Good lord, you're right. It's completely clear. And prithee, sir, what mixed thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Natsumi told the court yesterday. The Japanese saying he quoted. Drink. D. While it's hot. That's right. Yes. The jittery Mr. Natsumi was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. <laughs> if, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea... A ring would have de developed on the inside of his cup as well, after the several hours the tea was left standing. But... Uh... In short, Mr. Shamspear, you clearly lied to the court. Get thee to a notary! Objection! As a rule, I fill my hollow chalice up to seven times during any event trial. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet on occasion, tedium distracts me and I pour more times than I intended until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shamspear. Yes, my liege. So you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accused cup. Could it be that you've uh, perhaps mistaken? Uh? Could it be that? Yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene. 
effects that had vanished from your memory until now. Faith, my liege, thou art, thou, thou art a magician. For verily, tis as though thou hast seen with thine own eyes that night. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan to use tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but lo, when I looked, twas empty. And thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot, as my liege did suggest. Objection. And you've just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before? Are we supposed to believe that? Objection. People's memories are imperfect, my learned friend, which is why we rely on evidence instead. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that this spoiled cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this court. Hmm. The prosecution makes a fine summary of the facts. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No! What does this mean, then? I do declare it means there is no issue with the gas thief's testimony. A problem a bit about thieving gas, obviously. My lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear, after I did dine at Grub's Grabbery Alehouse that night, naught did pass my lips but the black tea given me by the Japanese, whose back be stooped as low as death. And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites. A broth as wouldst be called soup, and a leaf as wouldst be called salad. As in salubrious to the menu as the establishment where it was served. But you, gods, will give us some fault to make as men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment is seen fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. But I pray ye wise and noble fellows, Ne'er forget the simple truth. That be one thing, and this be another. <coughs> Jurors all, your humble servant Shamspear doth entreat you. Punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord... Who said that? My lord, if I may speak, my lord. Yes, Mr. Foreman? I believe we may have been duped by that rotten defense lawyer. By me? I do declare you may be right. We all know the waif there was making coins of ice to keep himself warm. But this lawyer lad says if he's seeing gas he deserves a dose of poison, eh? He's been leading up us up the garden path. That's what he's been doing. I really never said anything like that. But what we just heard from the victim there has opened our eyes again. We've reached a decision this time, and we won't be swayed from it. The court acknowledges the position of the jury foreman, and will duly hear the jury's findings. What? No, you, you can't yet. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions now. Guilty! 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 What? Seriously, guys. I hereby declare the jury to be in one accord. Oh, happy day! How is this happening? My lord, the defense asserts its right to carry out a summation examination. Very well. The court upholds the defense's right. Typical. My learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. 
This trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. Jurors, the court calls upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime of which he is charged. Alright. Let's hear it. I'm a man of logic, me, and having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. I do agree that gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gas is. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Truth be told, the tea my wife throws up for me is a little sketchy at times. If nothing else bears the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Hmm, I do feel that perhaps personal opinion about gas and its supply has influenced decisions somewhat. But never mind. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter-argument wasn't as unassailable as we'd hoped. And Mr. Shamspear was poisoned. There could be no doubt of that. Then, how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Mr. Shamspear was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate that to the court... Our only hope is to demonstrate that to the court in control incontrovertibly but well that's surely almost impossible at this stage if we don't manage it though Mr. Natsume will will be found guilty no delays Kazu proceed with the summation examination <sighs> all right then I am a man of logic, me, and having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. All the evidence, you say? That's right, and there's no room for doubt. It's all pointing at that Japanese man with the big mustache. Says the Englishman with the bigger mustache. Which means we need to show the man some new evidence to make him change his mind. If only we had that kind of evidence. Don't worry, this summation examination has barely started, really. Perhaps there'll be a shift in the situation that shows us an existing piece of evidence in a new light. Let's hope so. To start with, though, I need to find some way out of this deadlock. I do agree that gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. This isn't the time or the place to be discussing the price of gas, madam. But really, think of the injustice. Air is a gas, and air is free. Why should ultimate gas cost money? It, it makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. This isn't the time or the place to be ruthless either. If I might interject here... Uh, yes, madam? It seems my fellow Jay takes issue with the price our company charges for gas. But it's precisely because of thieves like this man that the cost goes up. Oh, what a beastly man. That unkept moustache, those hunched shoulders, poisoning tea and stealing gas, utterly unforgivable. No, no, Mr. Natsumi isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go adding on more crimes. Mr. Natsumi hasn't, po hasn't been poisoning tea either. Well, anyway, I've quite made up my mind. It's as made up as the price of gas. The stuff explodes. It can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gas, it, gas is. Could we please talk about the poison rather than the gas, do you think, sir? Well, if you like. I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas any time. You take poison? What I mean is, poison can only poison you. It doesn't explode, does it? Goodness me, what are you talking about? Set him straight, please, lawyer man! Well, it's certainly true that poison isn't prone to exploding. 
but I think you'll find poison also can't light or heat up a room. Oh, you're right. I hadn't considered that at all. Young lawyer man. Um, yes? You have a good head on your shoulders. We could use someone like you as our company's legal representative. I wasn't expecting to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway, the point is, I haven't had the best experience with gas companies in the past. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an all-out attack underway here, in case you hadn't noticed, against my company's gas. And I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. She's really buzzing now. All I've, he I've heard about our wonderful fuel is explosions and poisonings. What about electricity, hmm? What about getting electrocuted? What about that? A little explosion here and there is nothing in comparison. Any explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the theft of your gas is deplorable. My point exactly, but the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. We have far more devious rubber baits to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious? Who, madam? Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies. Not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas and we deliver it to our customers fair and square. Indeed. Nobody is questioning that, madam. Automatic is an extra is an exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have any gas at all. What? But if they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see, and sell it. They steal gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But these devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert uh, our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes and take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours, without us even knowing. They're diverting gas into their own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft. When we visit customers' houses to collect the money from their meters, we always have to check whether or not one of these dev devious companies has been up to its tricks. Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, juror number three? Oh golly, you mean me? I I'm terribly sorry, I was just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, yes. I just got a little riled about it recently, you see. Go on. An automatic gas worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipe work. We need to ask for your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in, and do you know what he did? I'm, uh, afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. What do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away company secrets here. Oh, please. Everybody knows. But it was very ne nearly the death of me, I can tell you. What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. As I said before, these unscrupulous other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Yes, but how does that, how does blowing into the pipes come into it? Obviously, there's gas in the pipes, and it's at a fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. Uh, and if you do that, any lights connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. 
Ah, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe the lights of an adjacent property that has no contract with your company flicker, you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with all his might, and you can guess what happened, can't you? Well, if he blew hard, then... Wait, you mean... That's right! The lights didn't just flicker, they went out! Along with the stove, gas started pouring into the house! What a disaster! The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard. So the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled, at, I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all? I said. So by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network of pipes. And then when the gas starts flowing again, it just silently seeps into the room. Mr. Narahudo, I think perhaps... Yes, this is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three, the defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Uh, oh, well, if you like. I don't mind. Well, I do. That's our company's secret method of... Method of I don't, like I said, madam, it's widely known already. Very well. Juror number three, you will amend your statement accordingly. Yes, my lord. Although I'm not really sure what the point of all this is. Blow too hard into a gas pipe and, ex and you extinguish everything in the house. And then you're in real trouble. When you say extinguish everything in the house, do you mean everything? Even on different floors? Oh yes, all floors are connected to the same pipe after all. That's true of every building, because gas supply contracts are issued for whole properties. Well, I had no idea that it was possible to extinguish gas appliances simply by blowing down the pipe. It's not something we would like to publicize to be honest, but we have to carry out these investigations, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Indeed, it has been mentioned on more than one occasion in the papers, even. Is that so? It's been mentioned to me, too, very recently. An incident involving the gas stove going out inexplicably, almost leading to someone's death. Mr. Narodu, I think perhaps... Yes, it's finally starting to fall into place. The secret link that joins all of these strange occurrences. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. To be told, the tea my wife serves up for me is a little sketchy at times. You... you mean it's poisoned? That's right! It's happened a tiny few times now. This is most traveling indeed! It always days like this one when I don't get any wages. I get in a tea time, see? And as you're doing it, my wife. She gets that devilish look on her face and she slips some white powder into my cup. And... And you drink it anyway? See, I was brought up proper I was. If someone gives you a cup, you drink it. And what happened to you? What did it taste like? It was god awful, believe you me. Salty as hell! <laughs> uh, uh. Then I think perhaps what your wife put in your tea was salt. No! So, she doesn't even care enough to poison me properly, eh? Unbelievable. Let's move on, please. If nothing else fans the victim sleeps that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Does that mean that if the victim could could be shown to have ingested something else, you change your leaning? 
Mm, sorry? What's that now? Oh, um, I was just saying, if the victim did actually eat or drink something else on the night... What's the matter with you? Sorry? I said if nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Haven't you, been to, haven't you been listening to me at all? I feel there is an English expression about a pot and a kettle that's appropriate here. Compared to the other jurors who don't even appear to have anything to say about the case at all, it would seem that this elderly gentleman has been listening to the proceedings far more intently. I, I suppose. The trouble is, he has selective hearing. Exactly. But still, this juror may well be the key to the breakthrough that was that we so desperately need. Oh, this is hopeless. There is no way for me to appeal to these people. I do think that the only way we shall overcome this difficult situation is by exposing the way in which Mr. Shamspear was really poisoned. We have to prove that it happened some other way and not via, via Mr. Natsumi's tea. Yes, I know. The trouble is, I have absolutely no idea how it did happen. Mr. Narahodo, I wonder if perhaps there's something you might have forgotten. Oh? Like what? It's important to watch everyone involved and pursue people if they react to something someone else says. If you'd like me to remind you exactly what I mean, I'd be more than happy to, of course. Once again, Sasaki son's fate is entirely in my hands here. I probably owe it to my client to hear any advice my assistant may be able to offer. So perhaps I ought to let Sasaki son remind me. Then again. Actually, I don't think there's any need. It's vital that we start trying to change these jurors' minds as soon as possible. Of course, I'm sure you're right. But if you decide you would like your memory refreshed, you need only ask, Mr. Narada. Alright, so... Uh... Objection! These two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious! Do you say Mr. Ufe can't you? Juror number six, did you hear what juror number three just said? Eh? Hey, what? Yeah, of course! I heard mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Natsumi's D.T. did, in a matter of speaking, pass the victim's lips on the night in question. What? What an explanation! I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there were any traces of poison there? I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time. But the mouth of the gas pipe scored only out of enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. What a piece of work is a man! What are you trying to say, Mr. Shamspear? What speakest thou? Prithee, is it not strange and strange? That is what I say to thee, sir. I thought I had been quite clear, but let me put it in let me put it another way. The shirkening could have been on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. Good, good lord! Alright, tasty than gas pipes. Is that what you're saying? Or is the gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry he tried to fill his belly with gas? Perhaps no actress would perform a kiss scene with him, hmm? For shame, madam! Speaking thy fancy. I assure you, I'm not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes. Objection. <sighs> this is no summation examination. This is a farce. The prosecution will not stand for any more, for any more of my learned deputy's friend's conjecture. <laughs> to begin with, the lamp in the victim's room is high on the wall. In order to have placed his lips to the pipes that feeds it, he would have, he would have to be a control. 
contortionist. These are empty assertions. <clears throat> There's no possible proof that the man did as you say. It's true, I have no proof that Mr. Shams Beer put his lips to the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shams Beer has been doing something in front of the in front of that lamp on his wall. And I have evidence to prove it. <laughs> Alright, you've got our attention, lad. I'd like to see how you can be so sure of yourself. So would I. Let's see this evidence, then. Now that I've got the jury's ear, I need to make this opportunity count. This is the proof that time and time again, Mr. Shamspear stood in front of this gas lamp. What the? These are... Wait, what are they called? Yes, skin prints that were found at the scene. Skin prints, Kazu? I've never heard of such things. The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit fingerprints as evidence in court, however. My lord, this is an exciting new forensic technique developed by the great detective Mr. Sherlock... Mr. Harlock Sholmes. It reveals all of the places that Mr. Shamspear touched in his room. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black, black magic, isn't it? Mm, well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's that great Shums fella, that's for sure. I agree. This month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places that you would expect, on the table, on the costumes, However, Mr. Shamspear also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in his room. For example, here. Around the hanging picture there? Indeed, multiple handprints appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could he have been appreciating the artwork, perhaps? At first, my colleagues and I thought the same. However... Imagine standing with your hands where those prints are, and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front of... Uh, I don't believe it! The gas lamp. The gas lamp. Though the reason why isn't immediately, immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamspear has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. Right, what have you been up to, you nut? I'd ask the court to recall juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? You said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now if you'll recall juror number three's statement. What? Me now? When the gas worker who visited his home blew with too much force into the pipe, it caused all the lights in the gas stove to go out, and gas to start leaking into the rooms. Obviously that incident was an accident, however, the simple fact is... If Mr. Shamspear were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in his room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Crikey! Uh, are you suggesting that the man purposefully caused the gas to... Objection! First, I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination. I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letter of the law. What is the meaning of this, Lord Van Zeeks? This curious photograph, or whatever it is, presented by the defense, the so-called skin prints. Clearly, that cannot be accepted as any form of uh, usable evidence in this case. But, but, but it's an exciting new forensic technique, developed by a great detective. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Hmm. Uh, Certainly, even research of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Sholmes cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. But... Please, my lord, if I may... Mrs. Saro, 
It was not the defense's t intention to submit the skin prints as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of the great detective's investigation of the scene as a tool by which to explain a possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <coughs> and if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never learn the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe you can allow that to happen, and I'm sure the jurors would agree. <coughs> You're right. Whether those strange handprints are significant Clue or not, it's down to us to decide. Juror number three. Oh yes, I do declare the great detective's investigation results sound absolutely fascinating. And I want to hear what that shady actor fella has to say about those shady hand handprints. What's the matter with you two? That was foolhardy. Well, I did say it then, huh? And I don't like to break a promise. No, wait! You heard his lordship. It's not fair, Dinkum. Oh, well done, Miss Narahodo. If just one more juror changes his or her mind, Miss Natsumi's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Mr. Saro. But I couldn't have done it without you. Oh no, it was you who identified the clue after all. This is very much your success. <laughs> Why, Mr. Shamspear, you seem to be losing your composure. Just one more juror, Mr. Narahodo. You can do it. Very well. Continue, Kazu. Hmm. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, press? All the evidence, you say? That's right. And there's no room for doubt. It's all pointing at that Japanese man with the big moustache. Says the Englishman with the bigger moustache. <laughs> well, the defense just designated another possible explanation for the events on the nine question. What do you make of that? What? Your so-called skin prints? It is an exciting new forensic technique. It is an exciting new forensic investigation technique, developed by the great detective himself. The numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. And if Mr. Shamspear had, had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe on the nine question, it can't be denied that there's a possibility that that's where the poison was. Well, yes, I won't deny that it's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to unacceptable forms of evidence. And besides... Yes? Even if the fellow has been up to that mischief with the gas pipe dozens of times before, it doesn't mean he got up to the same shenanigans on that in question, does it? Oh. If you can't make your case better than that, I'm afraid I can't change my sounds. Hmm, you do make a very valid point, sir. What? Hmm, that's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. No, 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 wait! Look, you've got your chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. If you and your Japanese cohorts can, that is. <laughs> Just leave our nationality out of this, please. Mr. Narahodo, if you can't substantiate our position, I'm afraid the jurors that changed their minds before may very well change them back. What can I do? Is there any more proof I can give here? Can I show that Mr. Shamspear really did blow down the gas pipe on the night question? I don't think I have 
clear evidence that shows he blew into the gas pipe, so I have supporting testimony? No, in truth, I don't have evidence to support my theory. However, there is witness testimony that substantiated. What's this? Testimony? This is incredible! Whose testimony? Yes, it's all connected. Everything is linked. A person whose testimony revealed details about the gas in the Garadep residence that night. Namely... Well... Well, Mr. Foreman, does that convince you? Whew, I don't think he was listening. Best assured, Kansas, I shan't let such nonsensical answers go without penalty. Oh, I thought I'd got away with it. A witness who spoke about the gas on the land question. Yes, there was someone. That's what I thought, too, but I obviously chose the wrong person. Who else testified? Hold it! Shamspear Nuts Natsume, maybe? Maybe it's Natsume. Uh. If I had like um <clears throat> If I if I had like brief um like you know, very bottom line testimonies, so I can re I can remember which each one of them said. Uh, not tell me. Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant, Mr. Suzuki. Not tell me himself. The defendant. At the very beginning of the proceedings here in court yesterday, Mr. Not tell me said the following. My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings! Even on that fateful night it happened, when I returned from Mr. Shamsphere's room, I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed. But before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me! On the night in question, the gas in the defendant's room went out. So I asked the court, was that a mere coincidence or not? Good golly! So that Shamsbeer fella blew air into the gas pipe to make the man's stove go out on purpose? No, hold your hoses there! What would you do that for? <laughs> Mr. Foreman? What the? What is it, man? We cannot allow judgment to be passed while this doubt remains. It's true that I don't have conclusive evidence yet, however, you must surely agree there is more to this case than meets the eye. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I said at the outset, I'm a man of logic, first and foremost. That's four jurors leaning towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. Therefore, the defense calls for the trial to continue. As the defense has rightfully indicated, a summation examination has concluded with a majority of jurors altering their decisions. Two jury members now call guilty. Four now call not guilty. Therefore, the jury's opinion is conflicted, and, in accordance with the laws of this land, I hereby order the continuation of this trial. Mr. William Shamespear? My lord, how can thy humble Shamespear serve thee? What say you in response to the various revelations made during the summation examination? So God mend me, I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either the lamp or the pipe. But your handprints have made a tiny mess all over the wall there. How do you explain that, eh? 
I am done with this. The dignity of this great courtroom has been solid enough already. Juror number five. Who? Me? As I've been to some pains to point out already, a print from the self-professed detective's toy has no place in a British court of law. Uh, as such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before the gas lamp with his hands against the wall, remains at this time unestablished conjecture. You would all do well to remember that. But the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just order the mouth of the gas pipe feeding that lamp in Mr. Shamesfield's room to be examined. If there are traces of poison there... What appears to be extremely simple is my Nebunese friend's mind. You will recall that in order to check for the presence of poison in the tea, some remnants of tea were required. Yes. Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison were to have been spread on the pipe, it would have completely evaporated by now, making any analysis impossible. Uh, I didn't think of that. In any case, Kazu, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the man to do as you describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to blow air into the gas pipework where he lived? Hmm. There's only one possibility that I can think of. And that is... To use the leaking gas to commit murder. Order! Order! Cancel! Precisely whose life do you propose that this man was plotting to end? The answer can be simpler. Now we've unraveled the mystery this far. Mr. Shamspear wanted the en to end the life of... If a gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be silently extinguished by the killer without anyone noticing. I live around those parts myself, so I know what it's like. I can tell you, trying to sleep without the stove lit is pretty much suicide. You'll freeze to death in no time. Mr. Gary Depp, the landlord, has a large fireplace in his part of the residence on the top floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger whose life Mr. Shamspear was trying to end. Outrageous! I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. <laughs> Mr. Natsumi isn't the villain in this case. He is the victim this man was trying to murder. Good gracious! <laughs> The accused is actually the aggrieved. Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. Namely, that the accused is the aggressor here. What? How can he still claim that? Let us indulge your fancies for a moment and assume that there was indeed poison on the mouth of the gas pipe. The question is, the question that then arises is, who put it there? Who did put it there? The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and his intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. If the assailant were unaware, how would he or she have known to lace the end of the gas pipe with poison? So now we, we must ask, how could anyone have known of Mr. Shamspear's murderous designs? You mean to suggest? Naturally, the sole possible answer to that question couldn't be more obvious. Only the man whose life was being threatened could possibly have known. What? In other words, the person who put the poison on the gas pipe in what was a clear re retaliatory attack could only have been the accused Mr. Suzuki Natsume. Whatever Mr. William Shamspear may or may not have contrived to do, he was never as the victim of a potentially lethal poison attack. And the only person who could possibly have perpetrated that attack is the accused Mr. Natsume.
The defense counsel Syria Singh has failed to avert suspicion from the accused. Far from it. In fact, now that a clear motive for the poisoning has been successfully established, that suspicion is greater than ever. Would you not agree, my Nipponese friend? Uh, uh, uh. Why did he manage to turn that around on me so rapidly? Mr. Narahodu, you must respond. Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change their leanings against us again. And this may be our last chance to gain the advantage. <laughs> what, ad what advantage? Well, it would seem that somebody put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shamspear's room. So we must name that person now and absolve Mr. Natsumi of guilt. You mean, name the true culprit? I know it might sound impossible, but if we fail to do that, I have no doubt that Mr. Natsumi's fate will be sealed, once and for all. As it happens, one possible culprit does come to mind. The evidence, the poison, it's all pointing to a particular po person now. So prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. I trust you make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. Mm, what? Oh, don't you worry. We know exact. There's one other person who I believe could have been involved in all of this. The true culprit of this crime. The, the true culprit? A term found only in second-rate novels featuring third-rate great detectives, my Nipponese friend. But why not? This fast has gone on for so long already, I see no reason to cut it short before its disappointing climax. Thank you. Tell us, my learned Nipponese friend, what is your latest theory? Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? You claim this person is the true culprit? Highly suspicious, I would say. Yes. Perhaps, my learned Nipponese friend, you should turn those white eyes of suspicion on yourself. What? For it seems to me that your reckless reasoning makes you far more than anyone else could... For it seems to me that your reckless reasoning makes you far more than anyone else you could name. A very dangerous man indeed. Go, Mr. Narahodo, please, you must concentrate. I, I was trying to. Then, you must concentrate harder. Oh, harsh. Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? Someone who knows about the gas pipe? I mean... You claim this person is a true culprit? Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Is it the gas lady? Take that. No. <laughs> Keep rolling the dice. Here we go. Technically, technically, I've got a one in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got a 1 in 13 chance to get this right. And I've only got... Oh. And I've only got one try as well. Great. <sighs> Good thing I caught that. So I save now. And, uh... There we go. Could it... Could it be... The name of the person responsible for the poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear is, I believe, Miss Olive Green. 
Miss Olive Green, Miss Olive Green. I do feel as though I've heard that name in the recent past council, but I don't recall where. Miss Olive Green, the woman from six days ago. The, vi the victim is a recent case of stabbing on Briar Road, an incident for which Mr. Natsumi was arrested, I hasten to add. Oh, of course, yes, Miss Green. She was left comatose for some three days, I believe, but I hear she regained consciousness two days ago. But I hardly need to remind the court that Mr. Shamspear's poisoning took place three days ago. Given that the woman was lying comatose in a hospital bed at the time, she appears to have a rather fine alibi. True, on the night that the incident occurred, Miss Green was in the hospital, unconscious. So on the face of it, it would seem that she couldn't possibly be responsible. But still... My colleagues and I visited Miss Green in the hospital yesterday, and we found her to be in possession of a bottle of poison. Good gracious, she had poison? And there's another fact that links Miss Green to this case as well. The defense requests that she be brought to the witness stand in order to explain the details to the court. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Shamspear. My lord, pray, what be thy bidding? Are you acquainted with Miss Green? Eh? N no, never heard of her. Judging by the look of Mr. Shamspear's face, I think perhaps he genuinely doesn't know her. At least, not by name. As the voice of Her Majesty's prosecution here, I adhere to my word. We will see my lord Nepalese friends fast soothed to its conclusion. I, I appreciate that. The prosecution requests a short recess, my lord, in order to subpoena the witness and bring her here. Yes, Miss Olive Green. Indeed, my lord. One hour should be sufficient. Very well. I grant the request. Excellent, I hope. The defense has made a most extraordinary accusation, I must say. But at the present time, I feel the prosecution's argument remains largely un uncontested. Uncontested. Accordingly, I'm afraid the defendant and his culpability remain the sole subject of this court's attention. Thank you, counsels. We reconvene in one hour. Court is adjourned. To be continued. Farewell, my learned friends.